In our DX101 video series, we've looked at the AirSpy HF Plus Discovery SDR and the accompanying SDR Sharp software from a couple of different angles. We've explored how to install the latest version and how to use it, how to update your firmware on your SDR to get the most out of it. And we've also looked at how to use things like the co-channel canceller to get more DX by reducing out and eliminating out those pesky stations that might be in the way. Today, we're going to look at one of the more popular ways that people DX nowadays, and that is by recording a swath of the AM band and then reviewing it later. And that's actually something that's pretty easy to do here in SDR Sharp. And if you know what you're doing and what to look for, it's actually a pretty robust and capable recording review interface that's available for you here. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, before we can review a recording, we have to make a recording. So this is going to be the part where we talk about how to do that. Now, there's a couple of things you want to make sure you know before we get into actually the recording piece. Number one is what source we're on, okay? And this is also going to come up here in a minute when we do the recording review. So the first thing you want to do is know what source you're on. There's a couple ways you can do that. Source tab, which by default usually is up here in the left-hand side, but you may have moved it somewhere else or you may have closed it. Um, but you can always get back to it just by going up here to the little hamburger. It looks like a hamburger, right? Or a sandwich, three stack lines. Uh, click on that and you'll see an option that says source and then you would choose your uh, SDR. In this case, it's HF Plus series because I'm on the uh, AirSpy HF Plus Discovery. That's going to then show me that I have a device here, right? Because I have it unplugged in. I choose that, hit play, and now I've got audio coming through, right? I'm DXing, I'm doing my live thing. The other thing I want to make sure that I understand is my bandwidth and how that relates to my center frequency and how I can set my my frequency range that I'm recording here in the waterfall. Um, when you load up here, I th I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, when you load it up, um, it usually will default right here to the sample rate of 912 kilosamples per second. That's going to get you a bandwidth of 725 kilohertz wide at one time. One of the things that some folks will knock the AirSpy for is it doesn't record the entire band. And I get that, but 725 kilohertz can actually be pretty good. I'm going to show you that here in a second. So if I have this full range, 725 kilohertz, how do I get this to set so that I, I'm only recording part of the band that I want? Like, let's say the lower half of the band or the upper half of the band. Super easy. So you have your frequency display up here. You have these two arrows that kind of point away from each other up and down. That actually changes your frequency. But the one right next to it, it may be, depending on what you have on yours right now, the, either the default or whatever you've set it to, it may be in free tuning mode where you have two arrows that are pointing away from each other, or you may have the thumbtack, which is the sticky tuning, or you may have the center tuning, which is two arrows pointing towards each other with a center line between them. That's the one that I want. And what I want to do is whatever frequency I have up here on my display, that's going to be at the center of that 725 kilohertz, in this case, bandwidth, or whatever bandwidth it says right here. The center of that bandwidth is going to be whatever my display shows up here. So I've found 890 kilohertz gets me everything from 530 up to 1250. So I can do the entire AM band from 530 to 1250 by putting 890 as my center frequency here on this display. I've got my spectrum display up top, my waterfall here at the bottom, each one of these lines that you see up here or down here on the waterfall, the traces, that's at least one signal. There's probably more in there, but especially at night. Um, conversely, that gets, so that gets me the low end of the band. Conversely, if I want to get the upper half of the band, if I go up here to 1340, this will give me the entire AM band up to 1700 kilohertz, but down to 980 kilohertz. Okay. So this gives me the entire upper half of the band. Now, some folks probably don't want to include the expanded band they're recording because they've already kind of really flushed that out. There's only so many stations there. So maybe you only want it to go up to 1600. Well, to do that, I have found if you just set your frequency range to 1240, you're going to get from 1600 kilohertz all the way down to 880. Okay. And so you'll see there's some overlap, which is cool because, you know, every time you do the recording, if you do a lower half recording and then upper half recording, you're doing a little bit of overlap, right? That'll always be there in the middle. But the lower half and the upper half, you can you can swap that out. And that's what I usually do. Like if I'm traveling and doing some recordings or if I'm doing um, like some sunset, sunrise type things, I might say, okay, today I'm going to do the lower half. Tomorrow I'm going to do the upper half of the band. Or maybe these hours I'll do the lower half and these hours I'll do the upper half, whatever. This is just a way that you can kind of do that, right? So put your center frequency whichever way you want it to be able to capture this full range. And make sure you've got your zoom over here all the way out, by the way. Okay, little little tip for you. 890 is going to get you the full lower half of the band 
Um, you can pump it up to eight to nine hundred if you didn't want five thirty. If you want to just do from five forty, now you go all the way up to twelve sixty. Um, but eight ninety nine hundred or twelve forty or thirteen forty, depending on what you want to have recorded. Obviously, you can go tighter on your uh, sample rate, and that will reduce your bandwidth, which reduces your file size. And then you can kind of decide, okay, if I only want like just everything from five forty to 700 because i'm just targeting those specific frequencies for some reason right for some stations or whatever you can do that you can absolutely do that and that'll reduce your file size it's less you have to review later so whatever way you want to kind of attack it it's up to you but that's how you set your center frequency that's how you set your bandwidth now for the recording part go back to my hamburger and you're going to see an option here that says baseband simple recorder okay i just go to that this is just the simple basic recorder that comes with SDR Sharp. Now, I'm going to mount this over here on the right hand side. For those of you who may remember from our SDR Sharp video we did before, if I click and drag this, it'll give me different places to kind of lock it and kind of uh, dock it into certain areas. I like to have mine over here on the bottom right. So I'm going to go over here on the left hand, right hand side and then click on the bottom little thing right here. And now it's going to dock nicely down there at the bottom. That's just where I put mine. You guys put it wherever you want. So I have two options to actually start the recording. I can either, in a live DX scenario like I'm in right now, just hit the record button, and it's recording. And it's recording everything that you see here in this spectrum display slash waterfall right here, from 530 to 1250. Um, so that's one way I can do that. Um, and just start recording, and just let it run until I tell it to stop. And I just told it to stop. Or you can schedule one. So I can go over here and I can say, okay, I'm going to be in bed tonight. Um, but I want it to start recording around 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning, do some sunrise skip. So I can add here some dates and times to do like every top of the hour uh a sunrise thing so i say okay from uh let's see here tomorrow morning from zero five fifty five oh oh to tomorrow morning at zero five uh, zero six uh oh seven oh oh okay and now I've added that in. Now I can do another one. I can do another whole thing. Or I can delete that one and just leave it there. So it's really up to you whatever way you want to kind of do it. Um, you know, if you want to schedule that in advance or if you want to do it live. But you need some sort of recorded file in the system. Now, it's going to automatically default to saving these in a folder that we'll show you here. Um, this is in your your root C uh, SDR Sharp folder which is usually on your c drive right so sdr sharp and then i've got an iq folder here and then every day that you do recording it creates a folder for those days and then all of your recordings will be in that folder okay that's how it default structures it um, you can tell it to save any other folder that you want it to so if you want to put something on your desktop or your documents or wherever you want it to be or a external hard drive whatever it can do that but by default that's where it's going to go is into your sdr sharp folder into an iq folder so now we've recorded how do we do the review Let's take a look. All right, so now I'm ready to do my recording review. And I've got a uh, file that I made last night on New Year's Eve of me looking for Latin Americans. And I want to see if I caught any. So I'm going to go back over here to my hamburger again. And I'm gonna go back to my source option. And this time I'm going to go down here and choose baseband file player. And you'll see now up here at the top, it says baseband file player. It says baseband file player right here in my source tab. Now, when you do this, if you've never loaded the file before, it's going to be a big blank area right here. It's loaded the last file that I pulled up, which is last night's file. Um, so it already has something to kind of pull in. But if you've never done this before, it's going to be just a blank area right here. So don't be, don't freak out. Before we go in here and actually pull up our file that I want to work in, I want to show you two settings you're going to want to make sure you have, okay? This is Lloyd's pro tip of the day, and I'm going to explain why when we get into the file review. Go into this little, uh, looks like a screwdriver and a wrench cross each other, a little settings um, icon right here, and make sure you have the loop checkbox checked, show real time checked, because that does not come default. Usually you have to tell it to do that. These other two, enable free frequency control and hide frequency cursors, leave those blank, okay? Leave everything else as default, but loop, yes. Show real time, yes. We're going to show you why here in a second. Okay, so to load a file, so I've, I've turned my source now. It's, I'm telling SDR Sharp I'm going to be reviewing a file, okay? So now I have to go tell it what file to review, so I click on my little folder icon over here. 
And that's going to bring up a dialog box. And I just go into the date that I want and then the file that I want to hit it open. And now I've pulled up that file. So now if I hit play, it'll start playing. Okay, it's playing the file. But how do I navigate this? Let me show you. And it might actually help here sometimes if you kind of take your little tab here that we've uh, got docked, take your source tab and pull it out here and let it float over your waterfall. And then you can resize it as you want to. You can make it as wide as you want, whatever. But what you basically have here is this is the full waterfall waterfall for the entire file. Now, I had a file that ran from 2252 to 0017. Pretty decently big file, a couple hours. So um, what I'm going to do here is I want to show you how to navigate back and forth. Now, the first thing you want to make sure you know is because we left this enable frequency control blank, we control our frequency up here. And that's super important. That's a good thing. That's a very good thing. So whatever frequency you have up here is the frequency that the SDR software is tuned to. Okay. So control your frequency here on the usual interface that we're used to using. What we're changing over here in this waterfall, this broad baseband file player, we're changing the time. We're going backwards and forwards in time on the file, but all on that frequency that we have up here on our frequency display. So if I click here, now I'm at 2256.30 or 2256.00, okay? And I know that I'm at that time because I checked show real time. If I didn't, it shows I'm three minutes and uh, 34 seconds into the file. That doesn't help me because I have to do math in my head and I hate doing math. It's much easier just to have the real time on there. And now I know the actual timestamp of that moment in time on the file recording. That's why that's an important one to check. So show real time is super critical. If I click over here, now I'm at 2217 or 2317, 23. If I didn't have that checked, it would show that I'm at 002457 into the file. So then I have to know what time I started my file and do the math on that. Again, show in real time, show real time shows you the actual timestamp that was recorded when you did the recording in your local PC time zone, right? Whatever your PC clock showed. Now, I can do that. I can bounce around. I'm going backwards here. You know, I'm going forward in time here. I'm going later into it. Another thing that you can actually do is you can actually zoom in to a specific time. Let's, let's say I want to zoom in on the top of the hour time frame. So I'm going to go over here. I'm just going to loosely say I want to go from 2258 up to about 2301. Okay. So what I basically did there is I, I say I'm going to go to 2258 and I click and hold on that time frame. And then I drag, and as I drag, you see it's kind of giving me this little shaded area here. And then I look at the timestamp on the bottom, and it says 230106. Okay, I'm going to let go. And now my file, I've zoomed in from 225830 to 230106. Okay? That's all I've done. And now I've zoomed in, and I've taken that whole file that I was looking at, and I've condensed my view down to just the part that I want to look at. And then I can hit play or I can say, you know what? That's actually probably a little more than I need. I want to take this down from 23 or 2259, say 58 to about 2321. And I do the same thing. I click and drag, highlight that specific area that I want to. And then I hit play. And here's where the other part that I was looking at here in our settings here, the loop functionality right here. Here's where that comes into play. Check this out. He had an ID right there at the beginning. What did he say? I'm going to click and drag. And I can do it from either direction. Click and drag and highlight and zoom into that one little place that I wanted to hear. And let's just see if we can loop that for a second and, and see what he said. So I know this is WLS in Chicago. Um, but you see, if I, if I zoom into that tight little spot and I hit play, if I've got my loop functionality turned on, it's going to sit there and just continue to loop over that one little section that I've highlighted. So you can see, I can zoom in as tight as I want to from the larger file. I start with the big file and then I can zoom in tighter and tighter and tighter down to the exact moment that I want it to be. And that way I can grab what I need to grab. Now, Again, I can click and, and go to any point in this at any time on this display here. I can click and point on any time that I want to, and it'll continue to stay on my same frequency that I was on. And I just change the frequency over here on the frequency display. 
Okay, so now that I've done that, how do I get back to my larger file? Because I want to go to another point in time. It's super easy. All you have to do is anywhere in this little waterfall interface right here, right click on your mouse, and it zooms back out. You get the full file now. And now I can go to the next hour. So I can come over here and say, you know what? I think I had something here from a right, right here around uh, 2335. So I zoom into that part that I want to find. And now there it is. And I'm just skipping around. So like in SDR console, we have the navigator where you're kind of clicking five seconds at a time. And you're clicking the or 10 seconds or whatever you have it set to. Or you can use the little boxes to go from the next minute to the next or whatever. In this, I'm actually clicking on real points in time. So it's actually a little more precise here in this interface. It takes a few extra steps to do because you have to zoom in and do what you need to do. But it's actually a little more precise here than any other interface that I've actually worked in other than maybe Jaguar. Uh, for the Perseus. So this is this is a pretty robust and pretty powerful interface that you work with. And again, once I'm done, I right click and I'm back out to my wide file view and then I can continue on to where I want to be. So that's really, and then any time, remember, I can go over here, I can just dock this if I want to get it out of the way. Actually, I'm going to put it here on this centerpiece right there we go. And I've got all of my usual functionality I normally have with SDR Sharp, including the co-channel canceler including the ability to go in after the fact if I want to go in and take out stations that I don't want to hear that are in the way like a local or a pest station or whatever it is I have that capability to do that on that recorded file it's not just a live DX thing I can go in here you just have two guys that are on the same page when neither one of them tries to show up I can get rid of I can get rid of WWL. I just got rid of WWL New Orleans, a 50 kilowatt station here in the New Orleans area. I just nulled them out completely using the code channel canceler on a recorded file. And there's something underneath there. <laughs> a little accordion. I need to go back and double check and see what that was. So you can see there's a lot to do here that you can take advantage of. You can change your filtering. You can change your noise reduction, your mode, all the different things you like you normally do in a live DX scenario on the recorded file, all your tools are at your disposal and navigating from point A to point B in the file is super, super easy with that broadband file player. Hopefully this has shown you the power of what you can do in SDR Sharp with an AirSpy HF Plus Discovery and a recording in SDR Sharp software. Super easy to do and gets you more DX in your logbook. If you have found this video to be helpful, we'd love it if you give us a thumbs up and also leave a comment. Those two things really help out the channel. And don't forget to subscribe as well. The way you'll be notified when new videos are available. From all of us here at DX Central, my friends, best of DX 73. Now let's go back and hit the bands. Keep up with DX Central. Follow us on Twitter at DX Central.